the Philadelphia Eagles are 11 and one. The Dallas Cowboys only play fourth quarters, I guess. And the NFL could be seeing a record number when it comes to the salary cap. So let's talk about it. What's going on, you guys? This is your boy, Joe Castro, a.k.a. Philly Fresco, and it is Philly Philly, the podcast. So today, I want to talk about, man, I want to talk about these Eagles being 11-1. We'll go over that a little bit and a little bit of the things I may have not, you know, brought up yesterday. Um, We'll talk about this Cowboys victory. They looked good in the fourth quarter. It is what it is. Uh, And we're going to talk about this salary cap, man. The the Philadelphia Eagles may have a top 10 pick, top 5 possibly with these Saints, and they are also looking at a record number with the salary recap so we're gonna get into all that but before we get into that be sure to hit that like hit that subscribe join the family we are on the road to 4k literally like right down the street we're not even on the road anymore we're we're pulling into the the driveway we're like 50 away so if you guys can hit that like hit that subscribe that would mean a lot to me man it would really help out uh but let's get into this man we're gonna start uh we're gonna start with the cowboys we're gonna get that over with all right because i really don't want to talk a lot too too much about it but it was a very impressive game for the dallas cowboys they were able to score 33 points in the fourth quarter, which is a franchise record for the Cowboys. Whoop de do. It's just the Colts, right? I, I thought it was just the Colts. I, I love like when we when we beat them, right? I know it was a it was a close game. We barely we barely won, but guess what? We won. But when we beat them, it was just the Colts, right? But now that they put up a franchise record in the fourth quarter, the, the Colts are somebody. The Colts are somebody. But anyways. I said this a couple weeks ago, and I'll say it again, man. The Cowboys are a team that we definitely have to watch out for. The, D- the K- Dallas Cowboys are starting to figure it all out. I said this, I believe it was the Vikings game, that they finally put everything out there, right? They, they finally put their defense on the same time as their offense, and it was able to be, it turns into a blowout. The Dallas Cowboys, when they are clicking on offense, they are a very tough team to stop. C.D. Lamb is getting force-fed the ball, and he is making the most of his opportunities, and it is what it is. He has made some great plays. Michael Gallup made some really big plays for them yesterday, and that run game is starting to get together. They're finding a good balance between Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott. So, they, they, look, the Cowboys are a team we're going to have to beat again this year. We're probably might, I don't want to say probably, but we're, we might have to see them in the playoffs, right, depending on how things work out we might have to even see them a third time so look we got to keep our eye on them I, obviously the philadelphia eagles have to worry about what's in front of them and, and right now what's in front of them is next week we can't worry about the playoffs we can't worry about christmas eve but they are a team that we're going to definitely have to look at i, I mean look they, they are putting up numbers they are putting up really good games that defense is, is you know finally I, I don't know i'm not like overly worried at the same time you you did give up almost 21 points to the colts who we gave up uh what 15 to and i'm not saying that that's the biggest of deals but your defense to me is still your marquee so if your defense is getting got i feel that if if the colts can put 15 on or uh, put uh 20 on you guys i think the eagles can put up a little bit more and like we said before you look at the titans game right you look at the eagles versus the titans we put up more points on them since anybody since week four i believe in the first half we 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 literally put up more points than any team has been able to through a full game against the tennessee titans in the first half you look at the cowboys we put more points up against the cowboys than any other team in the league at that point up until that point obviously the bears you know one upped us but at the end of the day i'm not too too worried about the dallas cowboys like i said but it is what it is they are on our schedule they are a team that we're most likely gonna have to beat at least one more time if we don't beat them in the regular season we probably will see them in the postseason and we're gonna have to beat them it is what it is so we'll see what happens there congratulations cowboys i know that's what you guys wanted to hear you yeah, you did it. Yeah, yeah, you guys did it. Whatever. Uh, but look, the, the Eagles. Let's 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 get back to the Eagles. Eagles obviously eleven and one. Eagles look really, really good, man. And one thing that I think that I didn't talk about yesterday. It's two things, but I didn't talk about this yesterday, and I think that it needs to be said. You look at Reed Blankenship and how he was able to come into the game and make an impact. He has played very well. He, in my opinion, has played very well. Josiah Josiah Scott made a couple good plays last uh, game last night, I should say, or yesterday. 
I feel like, and then you look at even the Kobe Dean, we've been able to bring in some of these young guys and they've been able to make some impact, man. Because the Kobe Dean, I know it's garbage time, but the Kobe Dean got in there and he made some plays. Kaiser White got hurt a little bit earlier. First two plays that the Kobe Dean was in there, he made two plays. I, I mean, th this is what you want to see. This is what you want to see from the Philadelphia Eagles. It feels like no matter what we put in there, no matter who we put in there, no matter what we do, we find a way to win. I don't, I don't love the penalties, right? I, I don't love the penalties, but that was an outlier in my opinion. I don't think that that's going to be something that will continuously happen, I, especially when you're looking at Jordan Mailata, you're looking at Landon Dickerson, you're looking at Jason Kelsey. These are our guys. These are, these are our, if it was Isaac Sayamalu getting four or five false starts, I'd be a little bit worried. I, I'd be like, maybe we got to figure something out, but it's not. And even to that point, Landon Dickerson goes down a little bit. Andre Dillard goes right in. We, I've said this time and time again. I said this in the beginning of the year. Andre Dillard's value can only go up if he can learn other positions. I said it when everybody was trying to say, you know, trade Dillard, trade Dillard. I felt that he was a variable, very valuable piece to this team. And we finally get to see it again. It, there's been a couple times where players have went down and he's had to go into that guard position. And honestly, I didn't even know he was in there. If you didn't, if I didn't know that Landon Dickerson hobbled off and that Andre Dillard went in there, I would have never known. I would have never told the difference because you didn't see anything. So if if Andre Dillard is able to take that left guard position, it's going to be a, a very, very interesting conversation to have this offseason, whether or not you're going to bring him back. Then you also look at a, a Reed Blankenship. Obviously, you like a CGJ. You like a Marcus Epps. Now you got a third guy that... Look, if you can't bring CGJ back, maybe you feel comfortable with Reed after a full year in this system, you know, and you look at uh, Jordan Davis being able to make some big plays. N'Kobe Dean, like I said, being able to make some big plays. The future is very, very bright for this Philadelphia Eagles team. And attached to that is that the Eagles might have a top five pick, right? The Eagles looking at the Saints, they are, it feels like every week losing more players. I believe they they lead uh, the league in injuries and most time missed by players. Uh, so, I mean, it's been tough for the Saints, but the Eagles have their first round pick. So that's something good for us. So you look at that and then you also look at, and you see that there's a rumor that the Eagles, that the, the NFL in general might be looking at 220 plus million dollars in salary cap which would be a record so obviously we saw the money going down the salary cap going down because in large part due to the covid uh protocols and everything that was happening with that tv money is back up things should be back up it looks like the money's going to go right back to the player so now you not only are going to be able to get way more money on on that salary cap you have a quarterback that you're most likely not going to have to pay till after next year, at least big, big bucks until after next year, because you're probably going to extend him. Um, you look at that, right? And then you add in that you have most of your offense already under contract. I mean, there's not many guys outside of a Miles Sanders, if you feel you want to bring him back. Who are you really scratching your head over? You have your wide receivers locked up. You have your tight end locked up. You're going to get your quarterback locked up. You have most of your offensive line, you know, figured out, especially when guys leave, right? The only thing that can kind of throw a wrench into this whole plan is if Lane Johnson is to, you know, decide very early that he wants to go. But I don't think that's going to happen. Knock on wood. Let's all pray that that doesn't happen because I have a bad uh, habit of, of calling things into play. So, I love what what's going on right here. The, the the future of the Philadelphia Eagles is very 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 bright. The immediate future and the distant future. So look, a, a quick recap. This is just a quick video I wanted to get out in their morning. Quick recap. I'm not afraid of the Cowboys. Every team should be afraid of the Eagles. And the Eagles are only going to get better. So I'm excited, and I hope that you guys are as well. Let me know what you guys are thinking. How did you feel being able to see some of these rookies go out there and play some um, meaningful snaps, right? Um, are, are you worried about the Dallas Cowboys? Because I know I, they look good. It is what it is, but I'm not worried. Uh, and how do you feel about this salary cap, man? How would you uh, realistically utilize that salary cap we might be looking because the eagles already have around 30 million dollars in free salary cap with the change in the salary cap you know it going up to 220 million 
we could be looking at a possibility of being able to re-sign all these guys that I was worried we wouldn't be able to. Maybe we get James Bradbury back. Maybe we get everybody back and we just run it back, bring on some rookies and, and get even strong. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. The possibilities are endless for these Philadelphia Eagles, and I hope you see it. I hope you see it because there's going to be a lot of haters that don't. But other than that, man, uh, I... I might be live later tonight. I might be back later tonight. We'll see how life uh, treats me. But y'all let me know what y'all thinking in the comments. comments. Other than that, y'all know what it is. It is Fly Goes Fly. And we are out here. Peace. Thanks for tuning in.